So now that we've taken a closer look at the structure of the atom, um, I said that I want to talk about um, talk more about the electrons that we have in them. So I'm just going to represent my nucleus here. So by a ball, we have nucleus, and then we have electrons going around around them. Um, in this simplified view of the nucleus, uh, in the simplified view of the atom, I beg your pardon. So. You should bear in mind that you know this model needs further refinement, but for the moment, this it, it will be okay to just um, imagine the atoms as orbiting the nucleus, like planets orbit the sun, just to simplify matters. And they are arranged in these things called shells. So this inside one we call the first shell. And this one we would call the second shell. So, so what we're talking about in this video is electron arrangement. And the shells tell you uh, how fast the electrons are moving or, or how much energy they have. The higher up uh, you go in the shell number, the more energy they have. So for example, this guy's orbiting with um, you know, some, has some energy and as you move up they have even more energy so that's where our analogy with the uh, solar system kind of breaks down because you know that the planets that are closer to the Sun actually move faster than once. Uh, outside it, so Mercury would be the fastest planet, followed by Venus and then Earth, etc. So, so it's kind of reverse in this case, but all, all analogies have their limitations. So in chemistry, the uh, arrangement of the electrons is of utmost importance because this is how you can think about how atoms kind of talk to each other um, and how they communicate is is by is, 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 is atoms. So, so when 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 an atom meets another atom, the, the first thing that they, they look at is uh, is their number of electrons. Uh, and it turns out that the electrons in the outermost shell is uh, what's what's most important. So the electrons, the, the outermost shell, just to give it a name, is, is called the valence shell. That's just a big word to mean, you know, the, the outermost shell that, that still contains um, some electrons, so don't be thrown by that word if you see it. And since this, uh, these electrons are so important um, in chemistry, um, we'll, we'll like to take a look at how they are arranged. So they are arranged in a very special manner. So let's take, uh, for example, an atom that happens to have only three shells. So by way of an analogy, you can think of um, this atom. By way of analogy, you can think of this atom as a triple decker bus. So here's a bus, and this bus has three levels. On the f well, it's a funny-looking bus, so it's going to topple over. So I'm, I'm just going to put an extra wheel on here. So on the first level, there are two seats and on the second level there are eight seats and on the third level there are also eight seats now the conductor of this bus happens to be uh, very particular he won't let passengers go on to the next level until the level below it has been filled. So if I have you know, one guy coming in on the bus, he's gonna come sit in this chair and the next guy coming up um, and he wants to go upstairs but the conductor says no, you can't do that so, so he has to sit here. So now that both seats um, at the bottom level are filled uh, the third guy that comes in can move on to the next shell, and so on. So the purpose of this illustration is to show you that 
um, in electrons, the first shell can accommodate at most two electrons. So the passengers are the electrons and the seats are the available spots um, in the shell. So if I had an atom, the first shell could only accommodate two electrons. I'm going to represent my electrons by crosses. So my first shell has two crosses since it can accommodate two electrons. And the second shell can accommodate at most eight passengers. There are only eight seats there. So I would fill them up like that, for example. So this would be an example of an atom with 10 electrons, two in the first shell and eight in the second shell, which gives me a total of 10. Now let's take a look at some examples from the periodic table to see if we can identify this so-called uh, electronic electron arrangement or sometimes you might see people call it electronic configuration so let's take a look at um, let's do a simple one first let's look at lithium lithium has atomic number three so lithium let's just get some practice with our notation that we learned earlier it's got three on the bottom left corner and this lithium happens to have four neutrons so the mass number is seven because remember the mass number is the number of protons plus the number of neutrons so this lithium has three protons and four neutrons and since it has three protons it also has three electrons so that it's uh, neutral so we're looking at neutral atoms later on we'll look at atoms where we can change the number of electrons but for now let's keep it the same so I have three protons and four neutrons in here so I have three electrons to fill so the first electron comes in and he has to sit on the bottom level first level the second guy comes in and he has to fill the second seat in the bottom level. Now both seats are taken up in the bottom level so I still have one more electron to fill. This third electron has to move up to the second shell. So we say that lithium has the electronic configuration or electron arrangement of 2 comma 1. This is just shorthand form for saying that there are two electrons in the first shell and one electron in the second shell since the electron in the second shell, since the second shell is the outermost shell, it contains the final electron, we call it the valence shell. It's just a big word meaning the outermost shell. So this is, this is the valence shell. Let's look at an example. Uh, let's take a larger uh, atom this time, something more complicated. Let's look at, for example, fluorine. So fluorine is right here in the periodic table. Excuse me. And it is element number nine. So it has nine protons. Fluorine nine. And this guy has mass number nineteen. So fluorine has nine protons. And nineteen minus nine is ten neutrons. And for a neutral atom, it's got the same number of electrons. So I'll write nine electrons. So I have my nucleus here in the center with 9 protons and 10 neutrons. So I have 9 electrons to fill. Let's try to fill that. So the first shell can accommodate at most 2 electrons because the uh, first level can only have 2 passengers. So I'll put 2 crosses here to represent 2 electrons. Now that I've filled 2 electrons, I have 7 left over. Remember, I have to. Uh, fluorine has to have 
has to have nine electrons so I filled two so I have seven left over and since there are eight seats available on the second level of this triple decker bus all seven passengers can fit into the uh, second level of this alley. so we'll have one two three four five six seven electrons right there and since this shell contains the uh, outermost electrons we call it the valence shell and the electrons that reside in the valence shell are called the valence electrons so the uh, electronic configuration or electron arrangement of sodium is 2 comma 7 which is shorthand way of writing two electrons in the first shell seven electrons in the second shell let's look at another example a bigger atom this time uh, let's look at let's look at calcium so I have calcium here on the periodic table it is element number 20 uh, look at the top number here element number 20 so let's write calcium calcium element number 20 and it happens to have mass number 40 so calcium has 20 protons because it's element number 20 40 minus 20 is 20 it also has 20 neutrons and 20 electrons to neutralize the 20 protons so I have my nucleus with 20 protons and 20 neutrons the first shell Two electrons. Now after filling two, since I need 20 electrons, I have 18 left over and I can safely fill all eight spots on the second level while still having some left over. So I have now two and eight which gives me a ten. So I need to fill ten more and the third level can fit eight electrons so I'm gonna have one two three four five six seven eight I had ten in the first two plus eight in the third shell to give me a total of eighteen so I have two left over to make a twenty so in the fourth shell which is a big one I have two in the fourth shell now there's some complicated rules to determine the maximum number of seats on each level but uh, for now we'll you know we, we'll, we'll be dealing with uh, relatively smaller atoms so we won't have to worry about the, the other shells but suffice it to say that you know um, the fourth shell holds more than two so we can safely put two in there so the electron arrangement would be two in the first shell eight in the second shell eight in the third shell and finally two in the fourth shell. So the valence shell is the fourth shell. Call that the valence shell. So now that we've seen the uh, the ways electrons are arranged, why is it so important for uh, for chemistry? So as, as I mentioned, the the um, the electron arrangement is is the key idea in uh, figuring out how things react with each other and there's a reason why we call gave a special name to this these outermost shells it's the reason why we call them valence shell because it turns out that the electrons in the valence shell or the valence electrons are the most important ones now atoms have this sort of tendency to want to have a full shell so fluorine for example needs one more electron for a full shell because it has seven if you look at the electron configuration of seven so it wants to have one more to have a full shell while lithium uh, has one electron in the outermost shell now it would need to fill an extra seven seats to get a full shell if it wanted to take on electrons so it would just be easier for it to lose one electron and then it would have a full valence shell because then the valence shell would drop down to the 
bottom one. So it is this behavior that governs uh, a lot of um, chemical reactions that we see in atoms. So this idea of atoms wanting to have a full outer shell is, uh, is key to understanding how they react together. So for example, you might have a barter system where you know, lithium says, oh, you know, I, I want to lose one electron so that I can be stable. Whereas fluorine says, oh, I, I want one, I, I need one more to be stable. So you could imagine lithium and fluorine being really good friends because lithium wants to give up one of its electrons, whereas fluorine wants to gain one. So, so it can, lithium can give its electrons to fluorine and they'll both be happy. So those are some of the ideas that, that we'll look at um, later on. But um, before we conclude this video, I'd just like to show you something really neat. Um, you could actually figure out uh, how many electrons are in the valence shell by looking at the columns in the periodic table. So the periodic table has been arranged um, in a clever way. So if you were to look at these things, these columns here, we call groups, I'm going to call this uh, group 1, 2, and then these elements right here, these are so-called transition elements, which we'll skip over in a while. If you see colorful elements, they are probably somewhere in here. And we have third group, fourth group, fifth, sixth, seventh, and we'll call this group zero or, or group eight. Um, we'll, you know, I, I, I won't go into detail why, why this is group eight or group zero, but the, this is a special group um, because the the shells are all full, all the valence shells are full, so we call these the noble gases, so you can think of nobility, you know, lords and kings as being uh, up in their tower and not wanting to uh, interact with common people, so these guys tend to not want to react with other elements, so they're perfectly happy on their own, they don't have to uh, get electrons or lose electrons to anyone. But you can, if you look at the group number, that tells you the number of electrons in the valence shell. So that's pretty neat. So for example, if I looked at rubidium, which is down here, and you know, instead of working out the electronic configuration and to find out how many electrons there are in the outer shell, I would just look at what group number it was in. If it's in group one, well, it's one electron in the valence shell. And likewise, magnesium, has two electrons in valence shell because it has, it's in group two. And let's look at chlorine. Chlorine is in group seven, so it has seven electrons in the valence shell. Or selenium. Selenium is in group six, so it has six electrons in the outer shell. So just by looking at this, we can you know keep tabs on what would make each um, sort of element happy. So while we are on the periodic table, I'd just like to mention that you see the staircase here. That kind of divides the periodic table into what we like to call the metals and the non-metals. Everything below the staircase, we call the metals. So these elements here are all metals, and they have certain properties uh, in common. And these atoms here, we call the non-metals. They also have certain uh, properties in common which we'll take a closer look at.